Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Ubuntu 22.04 has been released and Ubuntu is a really solid distribution that I wouldn't want you to miss on. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Let's check out what's new in Ubuntu 22.04. All right, so on first boot, after you've installed Ubuntu, this is what you get greeted with, online accounts, connect your online accounts, Ubuntu single sign-on, Google, Nextcloud, Microsoft. We're not gonna do any of that, we're gonna skip it. And then it asks you to help improve Ubuntu. Yeah, I don't wanna send system info. Next. And location services, I'm not gonna enable any of that. And we are ready to go. So it shows us a few of the software that we can install to make uh, our Ubuntu experience better. You can open software now. I'm not going to do it. We're going to take a tour of what's new in Ubuntu. And after that, we're just going to see how the Ubuntu desktop feels. All right. So talking about Ubuntu, as you can see, if you're new to Ubuntu, this is a very, very familiar look with the top bar of GNOME of the side panel that's in here. This is a classic Ubuntu look and jammy jellyfish new version number you can see the jellyfish over here it's a it's a very pretty wallpaper and voila you also have your desktop icons over here is your show applications button these are some of the pinned apps that you have this is your software LibreOffice, rhythm box for music and a few other things so we're quickly going to dive right into settings and we're going to check what's new this time around so once about opens, as you can see, Ubuntu has a new logo, which is which is divisive. I, I'm not going to comment, but it looks nice, I guess. So as you can see, Ubuntu 22.04 LTS and 64-bit. We are using the GNOME 42 version. We are running Wayland by default, even though if you face issues, you can always switch back to X11. That is really not that big of a deal. And also Wayland is improving at a good pace, so that's fine. And I also think that even with using NVIDIA graphics cards, Wayland should be the default compositor. Please feel free to correct me down in the comments uh, if, I, if I've gotten that wrong. All right, so right now we're going to jump into Appearance. Appearance is a new tab with GNOME 42, and this is a big thing. Right now we have accent colors. By default, it's orange, because why not? And I'm going to change it to blue because that is what I like and voila it changed to blue the buttons are blue and uh, as you can see the home folder so the yaru theme which the ubuntu uh, desktop uses is now blue you have hints of blue everywhere on the desktop which is very pretty i like it uh, let's change it back to orange to keep the default look the same as even at orange it looks very pretty and apart from light mode with the introduction of GNOME 42, we also have dark mode. And IMO, it looks absolutely amazing. Let's open File Manager and see how it looks like. Well, I believe this looks absolutely gorgeous and with the Yaru theme, what can I say? I love it. All right, let's change it back to light. Now you also have a new dock mode. So, if you look, this, if you know anything about Ubuntu, this is the iconic panel or dock the left. Now, as Ubuntu is using GNOME 42, so it kind of shares a lot of the things which are there in GNOME 42. So you can auto hide the dock. If you do auto hide the dock, when you put your applications window over it, your dock is going to be hidden. And don't bother about the animations or the lack thereof. This is inside of VM. Uh, so yeah. I'm sorry. And this is panel mode, so the dock extends to the edge of the screen. If I disable this, you are going to get a beautiful floating dock. Now, you can change your icon size, you can change the position on the screen, let's say bottom. I kind of like keeping the dock at the bottom, so this gives me kind of like a Mac OS appearance. Not gonna lie, this looks very pretty. And you can also configure dock behavior. So you can show volume and devices i generally like to keep this off and if you had this enabled you would also have the option to trigger include unmounted volumes and to include network drives you can also show or hide the trash but personally i like keeping the trash 
So that's something that is there. Another thing that is new this time around is the revamp screenshot and screencast tool that was introduced in GNOME 42. So if I start typing screenshot, you can see take a screenshot. If I hit enter, this is the new interface. Now, personally, I absolutely love this. So what can you do with it? You can have a small selection. So you could select this portion to take a screenshot. You can switch over to the entire screen. So you're going to take a screenshot of the entire screen. You can also have a window selection. So only your window will be captured. And the new thing this time around is a video mode. So now you have the option to record portions of your screen instead of just being able to capture screenshots. So not only can you take the video, take a video of any portion that you select, you can also take a video of the entire screen. Now, maybe there would have been an option to take a video of a, of a particular window, but it's disabled. And well, it would have been nice if it was not grayed out, but it's okay. I'm not complaining. Anyway, moving on, since we are now using GNOME 42, we have a multitude of new options inside of settings. One of them being multitasking. So if I click on multitasking, as you can see, you can enable hot corners. So basically touch the top left corner to open activities overview. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of this, so I keep it off. But if you want it, you can always turn it on. Active screen edges, so drag windows against the top, left and right screen edges to resize them. So basically snapping windows. So if I take it over here and I snap it, this is what I get on the right, same effect. And on the top, it'll maximize. You also have dynamic workspaces. So workspaces are nothing but these. These are your workspaces. You can drag and drop apps so that'll automatically create a new workspace, which is basically the idea behind having dynamic workspaces. You can also have a fixed number of workspaces if you don't want them to be dynamic for some reason. Again, you have multi-monitor, so workspaces will appear only on the primary display or on all displays. You also have a new option to disable animations. For example, if you're installing this on an older computer or if you just don't like animations, turning them off could help. Now we're going to open the software center and we're going to see how it looks. So Ubuntu software, you can also find it to the left in your panel. And well, I think it looks different. So you have a few tabs, explore, installed, and updates, very self-explanatory. As you can see, this is up to date, a beautiful, a beautiful drawing. I like it. Under explore, if you go and if you click on this button, you can search for something. Let's say Caden Live. This should appear. Yep, Caden Live. Uh, so two outputs. This is a Debian. Yeah, some should be a Debian and the other should be a flat pack or a snap. I'm not sure. Let's check. This is a snap. Okay, so yep, flat pack, I guess, isn't enabled by default. You can always enable this in Ubuntu's. And some people hate snaps, but it is what it is. Anyway, uh, under Explore tab, I believe this has gotten a revamp. Uh, Slack looks nice. You have editor's choice. You got the categories, art and design, books and reference, development, a lot of categories, and then new and updated. It's revamped. It looks nice. It's functional. I couldn't ask for more. Ubuntu 22.04 LTS version is a huge update that will be stable and will get security updates for the next five years. So this is a big thing. So with that, guys, this was a quick tour on what's new in Ubuntu and a quick tour of the Ubuntu desktop. Uh, this is a modified GNOME 42 as always. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.